Hi there, this is a revision video on business pricing and we're going to be looking at the concept of satisficing. Now, in business economics, the word satisficing is an interesting one. It's a decision-making strategy where a business owns, aims for a good enough level of performance rather than trying always to set a price which maximises profits. So the term comes from combining the words satisfy and suffice. Satisficing. It was brought, uh, brought into the economics and business lexicon by the economist Herbert Seymour in the context of something you may have covered, bounded rationality. Now, this is the idea that people, and individuals and organisations operate under constraints. They don't have enough information, they have uh, scarce time to make uh, detailed, complex decisions, and they may not necessarily have the cognitive capacity to make optimal, maximising decisions. And it also is linked to the divorce between ownership and control in many uh, complex businesses. So in large firms, managers who are the agents make day-to-day -day decisions on behalf of owners or shareholders. They're called the principals. And managers, whilst they might aim to be profitable, they might try to uh, aim for satisfactory profits rather than maximise the return to shareholders because they might have different objectives, lower stress, job security, work-life balance, or perhaps bonuses based on revenue rather than profit. So profit satisficing, there's no unique price and output combination. P1, Q1 would be a satisficing point, uh, and that would give a certain level of profit shown there by the shaded area. So satisficing is movement away from profit maximization. Maximizers behave in a rational way. They always try and make the best possible choice from all available alternatives. Satisficers typically, well, they only examine a limited choice set. So they only think about two or three alternatives and then choose what they think is the best option between them. And many businesses who adopt satisficing often use simple rules of thumb. They don't use complex pricing algorithms. They operate with a, a sort of a limited uh, operational idea. They might go for cost plus pricing. So, for example, they work out what their unit cost of suppliers and think, well, we can add 10% or 15% or 5% as a profit margin. Typically, satisfiers, not always, but typically they tend to be family run businesses. They're looking for stable income, stable operations. They're not necessarily looking to grow aggressively and maximize profits. Cooperatives and social enterprises, you may have come across these as business or business organisations. These are not purely for profit, or another way of explaining it is profit with a purpose. So they often prioritise social goals, community impact, or member wellbeing over pure profit. Uh, sometimes you have listed companies, but they have entrenched management, uh, and they're looking for and that management avoids risky innovation. It just wants steady returns to keep their owners satisfied, not so looking for maximal returns. And a lot of businesses in the UK remain small because they're operated as a kind of lifestyle businesses. So entrepreneurs who build a business to support a desired lifestyle rather than to scale to maximise returns. Now, profit satisficing does have a consequence for consumer surplus. So typically, satisficers, not always, but typically they set a lower price than a profit maximizer. So they're aiming to make an adequate, sufficient, satisfactory return. Now, lower prices uh, normally means an extension down the demand curve. So this increases consumer surplus because consumers pay less and they buy more. However, if a firm becomes lazy or inefficient or decides to downgrade the quality of their goods or sets prices high just to coast buyers like a cash cow, consumers may actually pay more for less value and have fewer choice and have worse surface, uh, service. In this situation, P1, Q1 is actually the profit maximising equilibrium, and that gives the consumer surplus of area A, B, P1. Whereas if you satisfy, let's say you drop the price to P2, you sell a bigger output Q2, you can still make profit because P2 is bigger than the average cost. But this time the consumer surplus goes up to area A, C, P2. So if businesses move away from pure profit maximization towards a satisficing price, most of the time consumer welfare improves, but not always.